536 and I'm calling the meeting to order. Ah, thank you, voter. So we first have public comment. No? Okay. Hi there. Um, so, for some, okay. Here's, here's an agenda. Um, so I thought since uh, we have a new member, it would be nice to go around and introduce ourselves and um, maybe say how long you've been on the commission and why you joined and what you like about it, if any of that appeals to you, say it. Um, we won't put you on the spot. <laughs> sure. yeah. I'll start. I'm Laurie Loisel, and I'm the vice chair or whatever, it's co-chair, I don't know. Karen usually chairs, she's not here, so I'm chairing. And I have been on the commission for three years. And um, I joined because it seemed like the, the the body within city government that felt most like what I wanted to do. So, yeah. Um, I'm glad you went first. My name is Booker Bush. Um, I live in Florence. Um, I've been on the committee for two years, and I know it's two years because Lori invited me to join. <laughs> um, and I joined after the last election, and I wanted to get involved in some way um, with government. Um, and this has been a wonderful way to get to do it. My name is Joel Morse. I've been on the commission probably the longest, I don't know, six years, I think, probably, five years. And I, I joined at the behest of uh, a former member, Natalia. Mm -hmm. And um, something I've uh, always wanted, I live, I live in Northampton, and I've lived here about six years, and I've lived in Western Mass about 20. And it was just uh, uh, something I wanted to do to um, see how I can help the city, because I, I really do truly love this city very much. And, um, I thought this would be a great way to do it. I've um, I've enjoyed it for the most part. Um, I'm Davina Miller, um, and um, I think I have been here about as long as book I kind of think it's hard. I think it's roughly two years, and um, and I did it. I had been on the school committee for a long time before, and then I stopped. And I always said I'd go back and do something, and it, this feels like a hugely important issue and a way to become involved. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I do like it. I struggle sometimes with whether we're doing enough or whether we're doing the right thing or whatever. But I see we all do. So welcome. We're really pleased to have you. Hi, I'm Garal Mohammed. Um, I'm the newest commissioner, so a little over a year been on the commission. Um, I joined after being informed about an open seat from actually Councillor Lisa Klein over there. Um, and I've been on, yeah, like I said, a little over a year, very interested in human rights as a whole. Um, I studied that in school, it's what I want to go on and do with life, so it just seemed fitting to do it here in Northampton. I love the town of Northampton, um, and I think there's areas that definitely need to be worked on, so that was a way that I felt like I would be able to try to do that. Cool. Uh, thank, thank you, well, uh, and thank you for the great welcome. Um, I was able to, uh, my, I'm Jeremy Whalen. Uh, I'm a teacher at Northampton High School. I've just moved into town onto Union Street. Uh, I've been working at the high school uh, for five years. Uh, before that, I was working at Northampton Community Television for several years before that as well. Um, so, I've been in the, in, I'm a lifelong Western Massachusetts uh, person, graduated from, um, my undergrad and graduate from uh, UMass. Uh, and so, this is the first time I've actually been a resident of Northampton, and I'm excited to kind of get in, involved uh, with, the, with the commission and all the great things that go on here. I think that one of the things that I'm most interested in is how we can bridge, um, how we can use education to uh, provide knowledge to, to youth at the high school, at the middle school, and, uh, and beyond in the district. Um, and aside from that, uh, some of the Things that I um, that I look forward to uh, helping with is some of that education and also anything any tech related needs. Like I'm a technology teacher at the high school, so um, if we um, need to you know make a survey or make a website or anything, I um, I offer my services for that as, as well. So yeah, thank you, and I'm excited to uh, 
it's great. It's taken us six months to figure out how to work this. I think that's from uh, North Hampton Community Television. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm also a board member there. So any yeah, concerns yeah. you have for that, I'll, I, can, I can address those as well. I already have a need. <laughs> that's great. Welcome. Oh, really thank glad you. Joined. Um, now, I said on this agenda acceptance of November minutes, but then Booker reminded me that we actually didn't have a November meeting. So we need to accept the October minutes, but I'm going to put it off until the February meeting because I think we all need to kind of look at the minutes. Does that make sense? So we'll just wait for that. Uh, we, we didn't have a quorum for the last meeting. Um, so we had an, we did not have a human rights committee meeting. We did, a number of people were here from Northampton Connects, and so we used the time to do some final arranging for what we're about to talk about. So, so this, we actually, we're not meeting, but not as the Human Rights Commission, we're meeting as the, uh, right. as and a subcommittee. I mean, some of us sat in the, in the back seats and didn't participate, so that it would be not considered a meeting. You weren't there, right? Yeah, so, right, so that's what we did. Um, oh, okay, so then, uh, uh, I was supposed to bring thank you notes and I forgot to do it. So that's my bad. Um, that's what happens when you get the agenda before the holiday and then the holiday happens. But So we want to send thank you notes to Northampton Connect. So um, I suppose if it's okay with everybody, I'll just do that. Okay. Sounds great. And so we wanted to really spend this time debriefing of the on the listening circles and then talking about next steps. And um, so, did everybody have a chance to kind of read through the report? What? So uh, maybe we could debrief a little bit about the logistics and how it went, and you know, for the future, um, and then talk about the content that. Well, is in I I would I've read through, but. I I'd actually sort of like the words, the text is important, but I sort of like hearing from the people who were there in case there are things that the text doesn't yes. really describe. Yeah. So I would like it if we can go through each of the reports and okay. see if, I mean, we don't have to read them out loud, but you know, I'd like to hear what yeah, you sure. know, really thought about sitting there and what it felt like to be there. And I know you were actually a, a participant at, at that meeting. So just to see what it felt like and talk about. Okay, that's how um, do you do you think we should talk about logistics and debrief on that or wait till after? That we have a feeling logistics are gonna come up when we talk okay. about what Okay, so we'll just go you mean what you're suggesting is that we go meeting by meeting. Yeah. So why don't we just do it chronologically? So Okay. okay. I mean just reading back through. Um, and Karen did the. Was yours the first one? Yeah, mine was. Uh, the one, I think there were two on the first. On the yeah, there were. You said the two. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we didn't have a lot of members of the public. We had, I'd say, I mean, I think she said four. Um, and, um, you know, we had some very verbal people who spoke a lot. And they are, you know, very important issues. I mean, my. Um, I think in terms of what it sort of felt like to me, I've done, I'm a social worker, I've done this kind of stuff in my life. I haven't done anything recent, I haven't done this, and you, you, it's, a lot of the people who were there were um, already pretty involved with the Human Rights Commission, so Booker King, you, you were there, um, Maureen King, we had a little bit of confusion at the beginning. Maureen Carney. Yeah, Maureen Carney. Um, we had a little bit of confusion at the beginning. I don't know whether other people did, which is I rather thought, I think I have been to various meetings that Maureen has run or has you know, pulled together. So I kind of assumed, and she straight away said, let's do it at Jackson Street. She thought I was going to book the room, and I hadn't. I thought she was going to book the room. So we had a little confusion at the beginning. But Gwen was there, and various people were there, and we settled in the library quite quickly. Oh. So it ended up being all right. It still didn't feel very good at the beginning. Uh -huh. You know, I felt that um, I'd taken, I took something for granted that I shouldn't have taken. Um, and, 
you know, we had, I, I think one of the people who came was a friend of Karen's, um, Steve Connor, um, which is very nice. We had, um, um, you know, somebody who comes and speaks here sometimes who came. Um, Lindsay Sabadosa came, she lives in our area, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. Maureen, myself, um, Karen, you. Um, I mean, there were things that were really nice, like Karen being there with all the literature at the beginning, you know, because I was hurried from somewhere else. And, um, you know, Karen's a very comforting figure in these situations. Um, anyway, so then, and people got going and they spoke, and, you know, a lot of it is, a, a lot of it seems, um, um, you know, I, I go through it, but you guys have read it. Um, and I don't know if people want me to go through it again. I mean, interesting things and things, a lot of it, out of our control. We probably can't make Dunkin' Donuts open 24-7. Um, um, but, you know, very important things. The effects of the ongoing effects of deinstitutionalization and the challenge about not about being poor in Northampton and the challenge of shelters that people, um, you know, people can only be there if they haven't been using anything. And they are, the times are very limited. Um, so, and it, it was a really good discussion, the difficulty with sex offender registry facing, you know, giving people huge uh, barriers to safe housing. And, um, you know, just how, how people fall through the cracks, like with the refugees. You know, you have all these welcoming circles, and it's been amazing, I think, how many people have stepped up to do the welcoming circles. Um, and families were given accommodations, but they still had to walk to school. And the hotel that they stay in, I think, is the one down there. So it's a long way to get to school. Um, so, um, you know, the bus service being cut. Um, yeah, so we've come a long way in supporting workers' issues. That seemed great. Um, but a lot about wealth disparity. Um, so that, those are some of the things we thought, talked about. And Karen wrote down his priorities, income inequality. Um, encourage fraternal clubs to leverage their assistance for specific cases. Engage in long-term thinking, not just duct tape, band-aid solutions that came out. And gather, we wanted to gather the conversations from the other wards. Um, I don't know if we have anything. I don't know if we have a report from you yet. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see it. Yep, Ward 6. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're Ward 6, yeah. Do you want to have that afternoon? Um, well, I haven't got it here. I didn't find it. Where have you got that? I've got it's, Ward 2. It's here in the end. Down at the bottom. Well, why don't you go yeah, down. I'll just <coughs> go ahead and talk on. We yeah. had. We had about <coughs> 10 people there, um, eight people, I believe, and um, six people. Including the city councilor? Oh, I have one. Yes, including Marianne mm -hmm. and, and Linda, who helped uh, uh, facilitate. Linda. For our name? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know her last name. Okay. But <coughs> we got there, um, uh, you know. Your first thought is very disappointing that there weren't more, but I think um, one of the concerns of a lot of people is uh, the lack of um, getting the word out. We didn't get the you know they thought we didn't get the word out as well as we could have, and I mean a lot of these people didn't know about it. Be they only went found out about it because they knew the counselor. You know they didn't see anything on you know you had to go to something if you were specifically interested in it. Or you had to sit in the paper. Right, and um, correct, and um, but the people that were there, it was a very good conversation. Um, there were some people who had some strong opinions, um, except it was Linda did a really, really good job of just letting you know, letting people say exactly what they felt, not questioning anything, and not arguing, or there was no argument or anything. And a lot of people had some different opinions, and all. Um, you know they had. You know I think that that 
the one part that was the strongest is everybody really, really loved the city. And they felt that for all the challenges and faults that we had, we do, a, we do really well. But there were some real concerns that they felt um, were doing. One was, uh, was a former teacher. And um, she brought up the point where she said that, that the school system is very good in helping the physically disabled who you can see they're physically disabled. But she felt like the ones that are the Asperger's or have the, the, the as she called it, the hidden disabled, she said they, they didn't do a real good job of helping those. Which I thought was an interesting comment because that never even occurred to me. And um, uh, that was really good. Um, talked a lot about uh, police relations. Uh, one person was pretty vocal about being positive about the police, but feeling that um, we need to do more to uh, work with them. Um, with the idea that we have to remember that overall it's a much better police department than in other cities she's lived in. Um, and I thought that was. Um, that that was an interesting comment. Linda, like I said, Linda did a very very good job of um, letting her really talk about that, which I thought was really good. Um, Joel, do you mind if I ask the please, race, the race of the women that had called? Uh, everybody was Caucasian. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, there were uh, six female, two male, and I would guess all were uh, 50 plus, um, and of uh, most of them had been. Northampton residents for either life or a very long time. Um, there was a concern that, you know, how did she say it? it it's a challenge to, uh, we're not very ethnically diverse. And, and so, you know, we talk a great game, but we don't really do a whole lot to um, welcome or encourage minority involvement. Um, and then there was some, there was a desire, some of the things that we need to do is really work and outreach to our children. Um, one person said we need to be more involved on disabilities. Uh, they suggested that the Human Rights Commission needs to have someone attend meetings to become more involved. Um, Where? At the, uh, the Disabilities oh, okay. Commission, I guess it is, okay. or, or committee. Um, they said, well, we need to do more to protect immigrant workers. We need to create exposure for immigrant workers. Um, encourage better police relations. Um, but it was a very positive meeting. You know, again, it was a little bit disappointing from the lack of. Uh, we were early too. I think we started at like six, and that may have been a a negative. I don't know. But I think the biggest concern that people weren't there is just the feeling that nobody knew about it. They, they weren't aware of it. Did people say how they found out about it? The ones who came. Uh, one saw it in the paper. The other one, the other ones were um, heard it from um, the co city committee member mm -hmm. or the city councilor. Uh, she was she, and she was present and um, vocal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so that's how they heard. So. Okay. So that is. The Monday ones, then the right. Tuesday. Let's just go chronologically. The Tuesday. Were there two on Tuesday or just one? Lori, I might have to head out soon. Oh, so okay. If I go sure. Back. Sure. Thank yeah. you. Thank um, you. So mine was the December thirteenth. That was a Thursday, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, that was the day that it was super snowy, like icy out, and mm -hmm. there was all that traffic. And yeah, oh, yeah, so we had four people who came, three, three members of the community, and then myself and Gina Louise. Um, but those people came like about half an hour late, so it was hard with traffic and stuff like that to get everybody in. Yeah. Um, it went really well though. The one of the attendees was one of the first people. She was one of the first people on the, like with uh, with the HRC when it started back in 1998. So she was one of the very first um, commissioners, and she wanted me to bring back to everybody here that she was excited to see the direction the HRC is headed in. She said there's a point where she felt like it kind of dipped and wasn't doing what she had envisioned it doing when she first started and she sees with this conversation, um, the conversations that we were holding, um, that she felt like it was starting to go back in the direction that she had hoped and envisioned it going in when she first um, was a commissioner on there. 
and she talked about um, the, one of the first things that they did was talk to local Boy Scout groups uh, in the area because on a national level they couldn't change anything with the Boy Scout groups in terms of allowing people who are um, transgender or LGBTQ um, being a member of the Boy Scouts, but they were able to talk about it with the ones that were here and they were able to change it in Northampton and this was back in 1998 so definitely very progressive and exciting that the HSC was able to do something like that. Um, and then talked about Oh, they, so, so people also mentioned wanting to see the HRC deal with national issues rather than just local ones, but then there was a conversation had um, among people who were there about how much we could do on a national level and whether that was too much for us to focus on um, and whether smaller scale stuff was better, but people talked about wanting to see the HRC respond and speak about national issues. Um, they discussed things like resolutions and sometimes members of the community don't feel like resolutions can really create change and they can be a passive way of dealing with issues. So some people talked about how that felt more passive, wanting to know what we're doing with the civility pledge, that kind of stuff. Um, but then Gina Louise, um, Councilor Gina Louise, talked about how uh, they were able to pass a um, resolution that pretty much was a domino effect creating the Welcome Refugee Program. So she was talking about how that's something that the Indian Council was able to pass and look at the domino effect that it had. So sometimes resolutions and pledges and things like that can have a greater effect than you realize it will in the end. Um, the greater conversation was mainly about who is Northampton for. It's very um, progressive. People seem to feel it was very progressive, but only towards LGBTQA and that we had a long way to go in other areas um, and that it's mainly for white middle class people. <coughs> those are the voices that are most represented um, in Northampton. And then talking about how we can have uh, positions open up to have a more diverse leadership and local government that's truly representative of its people. So they were talking about how on the council or um, on the HRC or just in general, like in government and office here in Northampton, you don't really see um, a representation of more than usually white middle class people. Um, so they talked about doing various things like offering childcare, um, a sliding scale for stipends so that people can afford to be a council member since you have to do so much but it's such little pay so maybe if there's a sliding scale more people would be apt to do it who typically wouldn't be able to. Um, a lot of conversation about handicap parking. Um, so they talked about going to the disability community meetings as well as the transportation and parking um, meetings. We talked about lack of handicapped spaces, um, downtown Northampton, so that was something that was talked a lot about, housing and homelessness. Um, some people thought that Northampton is currently having a war on homeless people, how we can help and assist members of the homeless community, ways that the Human Rights Commission can maybe offer resources to members of the homeless community. Um, so for example, with like the Dunkin' Donuts closing, we have, you know, we can't do anything with the 24 seven at Dunkin' Donuts, but maybe there's other ways that we can offer resources or talk to shelters and homeless um, shelters and communities try to put thing, more things in place for people who are homeless in Northampton. Um, oh, so they talked about certain rules and policies that are really difficult for members of the homeless community. For example, um, needing an ID to obtain a job, but you can't get an ID unless you have an address. Um, and if you don't have an address, then you can't get the ID, and you need the ID to get the job. So it goes on and need the job to get the address, so on and so forth. So they were talking about maybe the HRC being able to address or help out with certain issues like that or raise that kind of issue so that more people know about it and care about it because when it only affects homeless people and they're the ones speaking up about it, um, there's not as much push or urgency to change that. Um, the Northampton Police Department, the recent attempt to check to Israel, um, what Israel teaches police forces and how police forces that are trained in Israel tend to take on a more combative and racially motivated way of dealing with citizens, which made people less trusting of the Northampton Police Department um, because that was something they considered doing in the first place. Uh, racial profiling and bias, there were stories shared about um, a young black teenage boy recently, some, it was a friend of somebody who was attending, um, was pulled over multiple times over the police department, both times had handcuffs placed on him and a gun put in his face. Um, one of the times he asked the police officer, who was the same one as the first time that had pulled him over, don't you have something better to do? And then the police officer got like a call on his walkie and said, you know what, I do have something better to do and on hand, um, handcuffed him and left. So just various stories like that, that was one of the ones that really stood out to me. But there was um, other stories similar to that. Um, I know Gina Louise recommended um, people filing reports when stuff like that happens and bring them up to um, Chief Casper because if Chief Casper doesn't know about it, she can't do something about it. And if there's no reports filed, when they look at Northampton and how Northampton deals with 
minority um, members who are minority members or you know lower socioeconomic things like that and there aren't reports put in the police department when they later on put, like print out their reports of issues or anything like that they don't document those things so it looks like they're doing well when maybe people are having these kind of stories but people also talked about fear of backlash and having the police department then you know take it out on them when they see them again in the street or something like that and being scared to report and then um, the civilian tribes, people asked about that we talked more about it and then they asked if instead of just having local businesses um, promote the civility pledge, maybe asking local businesses in areas what they're going to do to not just have people sign the pledge, but actually promote uh, civility within their own stores or customers or things like that in their towns to kind of make Northampton more of a civil place to be. Sorry if that was very... Okay. I have a clarifying yes. question for you. Yes. Did you say that... Um, that Somebody told a story about somebody. Yes. Who was so the pulled person, over twice. Yeah, so the person was there told a story about his friend, and he said his friend was black and had been pulled over twice. Um, and a gun to his and, face. Yeah, handcuffed both times. Um, he had other white people in the car; they weren't handcuffed. Um, one other person was Hispanic; he was handcuffed too. They said, um, and they said that the first time they were sitting in the car at Sheldon Field. Um, they had been smoking, and then the second time they were in front of a local burger in a car, and the same thing happened um, in front of a local burger. And the person was telling the story because he was saying that he is a white male, um, was once in front of a local burger, was trying to get into his car, the alarm was going off like crazy, and he couldn't figure out how to turn it off, and the police officer came over. Um, he was in the car, actually, when the alarm came on. He stepped out, was able to have a, like, cordial conversation with the police officer. They were laughing and joking back and forth, and the officer just kind of like left, even though the alarm was still going off, whereas this kid was saying he was, his friend was saying that he was just sitting in the car doing nothing, and this is what ended up like transpiring and happening to him. I guess the police officers came over to see what they were doing in the car, um, and I'm not really sure the full story or extent of what happened, but I know he was handcuffed, gun was put to his face, and he said to the officer the second time, which was in front of local burger, don't you have something better to do? And then that was when a few minutes later, he got the call in Milwaukee, and he was like, you know what, I do have something better to do, and then just let them go and left. So they were just talking about, that. those were the two incidents that stood out to me. There's a couple other stories shared, but that was the one that. How, how many people were at? My meeting? Yeah. There was four people, um, no, three people, and then myself and Gina Louise. So the three people, there was one young male, um, white, who was 21 years old. He's the one who shared that story. And then two, and then one, um, woman of color and then one uh, white woman who was of the Human Rights Commission, both of them were 50 plus. So three people. Three people, yep. And then myself and Gina Louise. So, five so I'm really glad you're talking about it. Um, were there any logistical issues other than the weather? The weather was the only issue. Um, everything else was perfectly fine. Yeah, pull up. There was no issue with parking at Senior Center. They had been concerned there was going to be like problems with parking when I called to make the like reserve the rooms up, but no, there were no other issues. And Lori and Karen left me all the supplies there, so that was perfect. I showed up, it was all ready for me to go, so no other issues. And um, Gina Louise did mention how organized she felt everything was, um, that it was very organized, very thorough, um, easy process, and she commended us for making it such an easy process for her to be a part of and asked me to thank everybody for allowing her to be a part of this experience. Mm, can you put that in a minute? <laughs> Uh, so, shall we go back to, uh, let's go back to... Can I have to hang out? Okay. But it's so nice to yeah, meet you. Well, well before you go, is there anything you want to say in terms of highlights or, like, anything from the content here? I think the main things that we talked, spent the most time talking about were homeless. The homeless. No, no, I don't mean your one. I oh, mean, oh, oh, based just on in the general. whole report, is there anything you want to highlight or flag that we should put in a report? No, anything? but I did notice the, um... So multiple people had issues with like sidewalk yep. and transportation and that kind of stuff. So I felt like that was interesting that in multiple wards that came up as yep. an issue. Yep. So it seems to be a pretty high up there um, yep. concern. And Gina Louise is part of the transportation par parking and transportation committee. So I know she took some stuff already from our meeting, like back to there, and was emailing me back and forth about some stuff. So um, handicap parking, they might be they're going to be opening some more on Pleasant Street, putting more um, accessible uh, parking down there as well. It's something that she had mentioned. So. Okay, great. Already starting to see changes. Very nice to meet you. Sorry, I have to leave, guys. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so let's go to the Tuesday night one at the um, Civic Center. So, um, it's wards five and seven together. So, um, things were pretty well set up. The total number of people was it eight or ten? I now forgot. 
up. Um, everybody had heard about it from the Gazette. It was sort of a high-powered group of people. Well, some, um, it was sort of a high-powered group of people. They were all very motivated, very much wanted to talk about their experiences in Northampton. Um, um, I had gone to the <coughs> meeting because I sort of also wanted to see what it was like running the meetings. It was five people, sorry. It was five, you know, five people, but there were but three of us as facilitators. Who the room. Yeah. Um, but we had enough people that we broke into two separate groups and um, met. Um, I scouted your meeting to see like what things would work well and what things wouldn't work well. And the things I took away from that meeting were to try to get people to tell more story, their own stories, um, rather than just saying, I have this view. Um, but things were pretty well set up, and um, you know, we started and went. I, the only, I, the issues that people shared stories of <coughs> their own experiences with I, the theme I took away was what community are you in and are you uncomfortable about things because of it's a community separate from you. Um, so one of the participants told a lot of stories of um, I felt uncomfortable with but then I started doing things with people and I feel more comfortable and I think if more people took themselves into other communities they would feel better about things. Um, the story that probably impacted me the most was um, a person who lives near the bike path talking about watching uh, someone get a well get not you not treated in the optimal way by a police officer and also ambulance drivers and, and things and sort of concerns about that and sort of seeing that as a normal issue um, when I don't have, and I'd have to look at the notes. There, I was in the one group, and a scribe was with me in the other group. Mm -hmm. I have to look at the meetings from the other side uh, to see what kinds of stories they um, uh, witnessing folks panhandling, shop owners shared concerns, um, put him in touch with a lot of so people being in touch with issues that they learned from the social service agencies. I think otherwise the stories were a lot like what we've heard. Um, the uncomfortable part of the meetings were that some of the people said, what is, what is it that we do as a human rights commission? One person actually said, what's your business plan? Yeah, what's your strategic I think it was plan? strategic plan. It was strategic plan. Um, and, you know, I was, I didn't know how to answer that question. And, and, and I'm not sure that we did, and that part of the reason I felt that we were doing this is we were trying to develop what we should we be working on next. But I've got to say, that was the one thing I was uncomfortable about, um, and something that we might want to come back to as a Human Rights Commission. It's, it's a little bit of what are we about. And I've noticed in some of the notes, other people said, what is it that you do? What can't you do? For instance, um, would the city council ever hit a problem and say we would like to get the input of the Human Rights Commission to help us think about this problem? Mm. Would that ever occur? Um, uh, other people had sort of examples of, well, I can imagine you being consulted on this kind of an issue. And, um, so. But. Well, I was there, so, yeah. and, and I felt like the person that asked what what we do, mm -hmm. I, I answered the question, mm -hmm. and he, I said, did that answer your question? And he said, yes. So, you know. I did have in mind something similar to that, where I had to do a little more explaining because they didn't understand, they thought we were much more of an enforcer, yeah. that we could enforce things, and we, we were like policemen, you know, and, and I had to explain that, that we don't have that kind of authority and that's not what our job is. And again, I think that just kind of brought the point of maybe we need a little bit better um, explanation to the community of what we can and can't do and what we would like to do. And I guess it falls back into a strategic plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, the, um, everyone was um, white. Everyone was above 40. Um, so 
more people less than 50 than I would have thought going to be there. Um, everybody enjoyed the meeting and were glad that we were doing it. And we were glad to hear that we were doing it and what we would do it again. Are there other questions? Because otherwise I'm going to say a lot of the same things that we've heard from other times. Just one point, agree. Um, does the Human Rights Commission, to, to what degree if any, uh, does the Human Rights Commission ever recommend uh, non-binding resolutions to the council? Uh, we Are we involved in that process? We can do that. We, we can. I believe we have. Yeah, I mean, we have. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, is that something that frequently happens, or is it? Is it um, well, sometimes the council, like for a while, at least it came to our meetings. Yeah. And um, in that in that way, that was really great. I thought, and because if the council was doing something that was human rights related then she could inform us and, you know, we could co-sponsor or something. Yeah. I would guess without, that without that liaison happening, there just needs to be more communication, communication between us and the council. And um, I, I don't think there's anybody designated to be the liaison right now. Am I right about that? Yeah. I want to say that in the six years I've been here and all, I think we've had some resolutions, maybe, maybe twice. So, you know, frequently no, but those are the times I can remember that we've done something that went to the, to the, do you, you remember any more, Alicia? Well, there was the civility one. Yes. I think you guys signed on to the refugee. Yes, refugee. we did. Yes, yeah. we did. So that's two in the two years that I was the liaison right. that I can remember. I feel like there was a third one during that two year period, but I Yeah, I that's what I want to think. So. And sometimes we write letters to the editor. So, you know, we're largely educational. And so we were on the cusp of um, being concerned about the air conditioners at the uh, housing center. Yeah. Um, and that sort of got dealt with before we could do something. Cool. But we, we wrote a letter, um, you know, endorsing the uh, transgender question. Um, so. And about the busing. About the threats yes. to the right. cutting, the cuts, the PVT. Actually, I'm not sure. I don't think we actually we, got We were going to do that. We, were going, we get uh, um, the open meeting laws constrain the ability right. to yeah. sort yeah. of act quickly on certain <laughs> things. Yeah, you can't like call each other and say, hey, what do you think about that? Oh, we can't do that. <laughs> but I think that's a good thing, I have to say. I'm, yeah, no, I'm a big I, proponent of the open meeting law. But, but if issues are sort of got emerged and got dealt with before we could meet and yeah cool Thank you. but like when the transgender thing i realized it was happening i'm like we need to do something about this so i wrote a letter brought it to the meeting everybody said fine and we sent it to the gazette cool. um so if we we can act fast if we have a little bit of heads up or you know cool um, so I'll just report out about the December 12th meeting at the Senior Center. We had nine participants, including you, and um, I thought it was a great discussion. We did break into two, um, and it was a great space to have a meeting, really comfortable, um, easy to um, reserve. The director was great, um, and everybody who came read about it in the Gazette. Um, I noticed just themes that came up were this whole thing about sidewalks and people really liked that we did the civility pledge um, but they wondered what our next steps would be and they really want us to think about you know institutional racism and white fragility and um, and uh, priorities they suggested were creating opportunities to gather across differences and raising awareness of disability needs and supporting a culture of civility in schools. Um, and then somebody also mentioned bathrooms, gender neutral bathrooms. Um, so that's pretty much it. It was a good discussion and 
we also did a little bit of explaining what the purpose of the Human Rights Commission was. So I think that was also a good thing in general, like just kind of educating the community. So by my count, 30 people participated in all of these. You know, when you look at it like that, that's a pretty good, that's a good size focus group anyway. Um, you know, in terms of, um, maybe we can just discuss now our, like, kind of um, critique it for next time. And I feel like it would have been good if we had more time to plan it and advertise it. So I think it was a little bit rushed. Yeah. And um, so if we were going to do it again, I would really want to have, you know, yeah, several I, months planned. I think planned. part of the problem was that we were trying to coordinate it with the Human Rights Day or whatever. Yeah. And we came up with this wonderful idea <laughs> and then said, oh, got to do it in a month, you yeah. know, and I think that was part of the part of the challenge. Yeah. Um, but I do think, um, you know, it, 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 a thought, and I, I like the idea of separating it into wards, but I think down the road maybe to combine some of the, some of the wards a little bit. Yeah. You know, and so I, because I do think it's kind of valuable to have 15 or 20 people at one. Yeah. You know, right. I think you can break it out and get a little bit more. It was a little bit intimidating to people when there were only five of them. You know, nobody really wanted to say it. Linda was really good at bringing that out at first. Nobody really wanted to say anything. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I, I think we'll be, you know, if, if we choose to do this again, we'll be a lot better prepared. Mm -hmm. Any other feedback about logistics? I, I think one of the hard things is how do we contact people? Yeah. Because not everybody reads the paper. Right. Um, and East Hampton has some kind of um, like, um, almost like a listserv. They have a lot, like they do, I think. Yeah, you, know, you lose your cat, you put something on you. I mean, there's a lot more interaction. Mm -hmm. and I, we don't have anything similar. We have that 413 thing, but it's 413. So I just, I think the issue for me is how can we contact more people? How can we let people, yeah. more people of different different backgrounds know about it. Because I think some people, I mean, I think people are interested when they get down to it, but there's a lot of other things in people's lives. Yeah. Crabby, well, right just there. to, I mean, we didn't just put it in the paper, it was on Facebook. Yeah. I mean, Karen made these great graphics yeah, and yeah. all the city councilors sent it out on their email threads yeah. and uh, you know, some of the wards have neighborhood associations. So, for example, the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association sent it up twice. And Ward 3 is the one where we had nine people. I don't know if all the all the wards have neighborhood associations. Um, but again, I, you know, my experience is that people need to hear things many times before it sinks in. So, I just Maybe think next time, too, we could get, we could somehow get a little bit more broadcast media. Yeah. You know, I, I honestly think that this would be a great discussion or opportunity on something like Connecting Point, WGBY. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they're, you know, they're... I wonder if we have a contract there. Not anymore. Oh, really? <laughs> I've officially retired. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> but no, I can still contact them. That's, that's, uh, that's, but they're, you know, they're up to five days a week and, and Tony's constantly looking for you know, mm -hmm. interviews and everything, and I would think this would be a really, really good thing for them to, to talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think that would help. I think next time we do it, I'm sure that we could get um, Bill Newman to have somebody on his radio program. Yeah. Right, same thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and also Monty and all, any of Bob Flaherty, all those people would do it. So we just didn't have time. Jeremy, do you want to say anything from your perspective? Yeah, I, I just echoing what uh, Joel had said. I think that if we have a kind of a larger pool of individuals, we also can solve some other logistical things. I know that uh, the National Honor Society at the high school they need to do volunteer hours. There was a, um, a public forum in Ward Three at Bridge Street School, and there was actually um, child care provided by the, the NHS. They got volunteer hours mm -hmm. for it, and so just kind of. Um, to to break down some of those barriers that that might uh, arise and have more individuals show up uh, 
to, to be part of that discussion. Um, we can certainly use uh, North Haven Community Television uh, as, as, a, as a point to you know, make a 30 second PSA. I'm glad to do that. Um, and, uh, and I'm also uh, willing to um, you know, create a website or do a Facebook page and, and get a listserv going if that's, if that's what we cho chose to do as well. The other thing is, if you wouldn't mind putting this in the minutes too, in terms of in terms of critiquing, it's like we didn't give ourselves enough time to have translators and childcare, so that <coughs> kept some people away, or we didn't welcome some people. So those are the kind of things I would hope we would do next time. Um, so your idea about the honor society that also made me think we should have had a a group for youth. Good to hear from youth and their perspectives. So, you know, I think that we should consider this uh, an experiment that we might want to try to fine tune a little bit another time. Um, any other comments about logistics or things you wish we did differently or anything? So, what I thought we might want to do now is sort of talk about what we think the takeaways are and and then what we want to do next. So the content takeaways. And I have a, um, did you have anything you want to say, Lisa? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, does that make sense? Okay, so I, I'm gonna, um, well, I could put it up on, a, on one of these things or on that thing. You're going to do it? I have a marker here. I have to expose my dyslexia. <laughs> it's my hidden disability. Here, let me hold it. I want to put it right here so everybody can see it. Well, you can take this off and um, take it one of those sticky ones. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to take this one? Does anybody? You can put it right on the top. Yeah, you can put it on the top. Yeah, All right. Power up those mayors. <laughs> I was, I was going to make a different comment. <laughs> <laughs> so one takeaway I have is the sidewalk thing, because that came up in several. So there's some people are kind of see not navigable sidewalks as a human rights issue, accessibility issue. And then another one that seemed to come up a lot is uh, police relations. Police relations, yep. And also um, income inequality came up repeatedly. And then there's lots of themes that kind of fall from that. There were several things about immigration issues in several of the meetings. By the way, I'm sorry, I'm going back to something. So one of the things I watched that you were reading was having everybody read the human rights alt each person reading it separately. Yeah. Well, we all read it. We all read parts of it. So yeah. we all read and we did that yeah. at the beginning of our meeting. Yeah. And that was like, wow. Yeah. Because yeah. we sort of didn't, it, it's a really good statement. Uh, yeah, we did that in Ward, Ward 3, too. Yeah. Yeah, when in, um, here it is. I think this was the Ward 3 immigration issues. ICE has been in the parking lot of Jackson Street School don't want to see children taking away from parents. Um, homelessness. Oh, another thing, I don't know if it came up with the others or not, but there was a concern. Um, uh, panhandling issues with respect to retailers. Mm -hmm. That seemed to be a big concern. I, I forgot to add that part. I don't know if you want to add that. 
I'll add it. How? What words did you use? To, <coughs> um, um, panhandling issues, I guess. Uh, what do we do? Business community. There you go. Okay. And um, in terms of priorities, um, one priority suggested was to create a list of free resources, and I, I don't I think thought we, we had one. I yeah. mean, I thought there is one. I don't know if there is or not. I just know that somebody suggested yeah. that, and we should find out if there is one. But a list of free resources. Free resources. I, meaning, I think like we, educational resources? Or? No, I think it was more like, I think this was in relation to the income inequality. Like, where can the poor go to get help? Yeah. You know? Yeah, there's a couple of talks about um, access to actual provisions. So, you know, um, hygiene products or things in, 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 you know, strategic places that were accessible um, to individuals in need. Um, access to resources, I guess. Would that be? Yeah. Okay, so you're having so I think the, the words I've heard were showers, um, mm -hmm. lockers, mm. Um, educational resources. So you have one sheet there that you're putting issues and one sheet that you're putting priorities? Yeah, I, it okay. sounded like this was That's a good idea. That. But it also seems to me that on the right we have a, a list of a number of different issues. Mm -hmm. And these particularly seem to me about access to people who, who don't have them. Yeah. yeah. The priorities. I mean, to have a list of free resources that, that are sort of targeted to people, I mean... That's what I thought. You mean that there should be a list of, a general list of help available right. in, that, in Northampton? That's what I thought the question was, but may I... Clearly, I wasn't at the meeting, so it was more of that, I assume. See, I think oh, there are a lot of people who are saying this is, there needs to be a community center. A community center. Wait, at the, I didn't see that in these notes. I know. Oh, you're that's, saying? That's, um, I'll just, um, so in the meetings that Northampton Connects has had, all of the same stuff has appeared. Yeah. And trying to go the next steps have been, um, if we could have a community center, what does it need to have? And that's where all of this stuff is popping out. That's why I reframed the words. Okay, but in this list, somebody yeah. was saying a, a list of free resources. Not all that, but just a list. Just some place where you could find, here's a, here's a website or something at the library you could access and you could find materials. No, I think more like, like a, a list that would say if you need free medical care, you go here. If you need food, you go here. That kind of that's what I thought. Okay. A list yeah, of I, resources I that would be helpful to people who don't have much money. Uh, resource library. Were you going to say something, Jeremy? Yeah, just to, to adding to that, um, there was an individual that was talking about Forbes Library and how they were appreciative of, of it being almost like a community center mm -hmm. in certain aspects. So. But in the old days, it, you used to have these binders that had uh, in them yeah. a sort of list of everything. I mean, they used to exist if you worked in something like social services. It would be a binder. It's exactly, yeah. All kinds of... But there ought to be a desk with a social worker sitting there. 
who could say, and you walked up and said, where do I find this? And they would, there's this binder that would have that. Other things that people want to add to either the issues or the priorities for the HRC? So I'm trying to get at what are the themes we want to highlight. I think for, it's, I guess, before addressing those issues, that I think the common <coughs> is that clarification of what the, the powers are of the, of the um, HRC. I think that that was um, addressing these, addressing all the issues, but first, a lot of having people understand and educate people on, you know, some of the limitations that, that are there. So um, you want to put that under priorities, like educating the I community? Think, I think so. Okay. It's sort of like implicit kind of even. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's excellent to have, you know, the mission statement. I love, you know, the mission statement was, was read at the meetings, mm -hmm. and, and I think the more you know, education, the more that that becomes um, part of the repertoire, the more individuals will kind of understand the, that mission statement. I'm trying to think of how to say that. HRC, it's really sort of a an, ex, an explanation of what we do, and what we can and what we yeah, can Yeah, reiteration do. of HRC responsibilities or mission. mission statement. Yeah, mission. I wanted to add two things to the priorities list because they seem to, because they were stated in these mm -hmm. and they seem to kind of echo things that are we're thinking about doing anyway and one is create opportunities to gather across differences that also seems resonant to our wider yeah. country um, so create opportunities to gather across differences and then there was another one that was skill building uh, where was it um, sorry it was build competencies skill building cultural competence and I was thinking that that kind of reminds me of um, the um, training active bystander thing we want to do. Well, maybe it isn't, but it's, it is skill, skill building. And you're putting all this on the priority. Skill building about build competencies around. Um, so actually, what you you build the building. number two that you have there, uh -huh. it build should say create opportunities to gather across differences. I know. I'm, oh, okay. I'm just rephrasing. Build okay. communities across differences. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just <coughs> heard me. Um, so. Um, no, I reframed what you said. Skill building, cultural competence. Cultural competence. Cultural competence. Yeah. Competence. Oh, competence. Oh, okay. Yeah. And and somewhere else, I believe that I read something about. Um, yeah. Build on skills for people to respond to human rights violations on the spot. So that's the one that I think is like training after violence. Skill building. Yeah. then the next question I have is what do we all think we want to do like I had this um, idea that we could take this document which is kind of like raw data and turn it into a report a report that we could give to the City Council um, that would be short but you know inform people and maybe in that way also kind of carry the conversation on a little bit these are some of the issues that came up in these listening circles, and these are some of the priorities. 
people want, because we said, what do you want the Human Rights Commission to do, but we also said, what do you want the city to do, you know, in terms of human rights? I think that'd be a great idea. Um, I think that, I mean, <clears throat> I agree that we need to, we said we were going to give a report to the city council and the mayor of what we learned in all of this. So we definitely should do that. Um, I'm not sure how we're going to, how we will, is this the beginnings of the report? Yeah. That looks to me like kind of the end of the report. <laughs> well, the end, the beginning, I think yeah. you meant like the process. Yeah, it, it's the process. like, so when I read this report, probably if I was on the city council, I would read about here's here's what we wanted to do, here's how we did it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Here's who came. Yeah. Here's what it felt like. And here's what our take, here's our take home messages yeah. of what yeah. we right. should right. Yeah. 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 Like do next. Right. Not that other. I mean, a lot of other things are also brought up. But yeah. This, this is what. This is the stuff that yeah. bubbles to the top. But are, is there anything else anybody would want to put on either of these lists that, like, points that you think should be made to the mayor and the city council? No, I think that covers it pretty well. Like as Booker said, it kind of went went rose. Um. Well. You know, there's also some, how do we put in the fact that people like living in Northampton? Um, do we need to say that? Well, you can put that on there. Put that on as number eight. It's just don't have to be Negative. This is really bad, so. I think it didn't come up very much, but it came up a certain amount. Um, it, it is, is there any way to get more diversity um, in, in, the city council, in um, the mayor's office, and is there any way to? Um, we also, how can we involve more young people? I think that, that, that was a particular question. specifically say LGBTQ? Well, the only reason I, 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 I would hesitate in that, because I read a lot of those, and I felt like a lot of them were saying that's all we, Northampton, is concerned with. Or that seems to be more of a private, you know, there's other minorities besides LGBTQ, and that, you know, I, I got from one of our meetings that they do a very Good job on recognizing that and working with that, but what about you know? I'm going to say it anyway. Yeah. No, I I agree that that's a tension point here. That there's a sense that that's already there was a there was a feeling that that was kind of a priority. It's a priority. Yeah. That's why there's a rainbow walker, rainbow. Right. Um, Walkway, but there's no red Well, and it wasn't it, it, it wasn't that that was a negative. Yeah. They thought they did a wonderful job with that. You know, they they loved that aspect of it. But there's some others that need help too. Yeah. You know, that need to be recognized or supported. I'm still not sure if there's enough power that LGBTQ people have as much power as. So that's why I think it's just still. I was surprised that uh, in, that I was really surprised transgender issues didn't get brought up more here in these listening circles. Um, and you know, we don't have to. I mean, just because something didn't get brought up that we think is a priority doesn't mean we don't have to address it. But I was just surprised. 
Well, see, I think that's why I, I, I think we should be specific about what we mean diversity. Because if you, ooh, you know what's not up there? The stuff about um, disabilities. Mm -hmm. We want to broaden the sidewalk issues to the yeah, side yeah. 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 I mean, Not sidewalk more. issues is, is about disabilities to some degree. So you yeah. just you said. But I wanted it. But you know, people. I, even at our talked about people with mental health issues uh -huh. not being treated well. Uh -huh. um, sex offenders. So maybe we put disability issues rather than sidewalk. Yeah, if I think, we I think put disability separate. issues slash sidewalk. <laughs> Well, I think sidewalk needs to be there because it was repeated several yeah, in every single one. So I, I think that deserves to be mentioned because so many Well, we can put EG, sidewalk, disability right. parking, but also hidden disabilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we may, in, a, in a real report, we probably need to talk about this. Yeah. Can you write hidden under that? Under diversity, we might want to put socioeconomic. Diversity as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Good idea. In medicine, it's social economic status. Was it hidden? What did it say? Say yes, yes. Um. So. And I, I think, and this is. Different than that. Yes. And, and what is different? Yeah, I think socioeconomic status diversity is different yes. than talking about income. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes, that's a good point. <coughs> I mean, I think I don't think we should add any more. I mean, that's I don't want to bite off more than we can chew. Yeah. No, I. I this Part is of me what says should, do we need to prioritize this? Right. Well, here's the thing. We're not biting this off. We're just reporting what came up. This is this is really for uh, for our for us to write a report and give to the city council. Then we can figure out what we want to do. So I don't think we need to worry about that. We're biting up whether we can shoot. We're just trying to give information. Does that make sense? Is there a newspaper article in this? Um, <coughs> well, they might do a story uh, if about the report. Yeah. 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 Um, so, if somebody wants to write the report, that's fine. I don't mind doing it also. When I write this, I think I'm going to, if we put sidewalk issues, and we're presumably crossing that out because we've got another one, disability issues, the sidewalk, and I think maybe included in that, I don't think it should start with police relations. I think that should be further down the list. Well, Sure. I mean, I'm going to write, a, I, unless somebody else wants to do it, I'm going to write a report based on this stuff and I'll give a draft to the, to the commission. Yeah, and I think can, those are more bullet points as opposed to one, two, three. Right? Sure. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. So I was I hoping, though, I, one of the things I, I there's, was hoping. There's some meaning as to why things appeared first. Yeah. And that's, um, that's Freudian. Uh, right. But, but it, there's some meaning to uh, well, why things went up first and second. So I, but I agree it shouldn't be the number one issue. But let me just ask, for people who are at these um, listening sessions, one of the things that is disappointing to me is that in this report, there's no verbatim quotes, which is uh, what I was hoping to have. And I wondered if anybody took notes that have verbatim quotes. And if, if you do, if you could get them to me, because I would like to include well, them. I, we don't, I don't, I won't have a verbatim quote. Are there stories? I guess the better thing would be: Are there stories that you've heard that you would want to put in? Well, I'll look in here and see. I, there, were, I mean, I know that there were stories about police, and there were stories about diversity. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think I had a couple of quotes in mind. Okay, so okay. If you all want me to do this, I will do it. I'll send out an email and say, if anybody has can find verbatim quotes in their notes, send them to me, because I'd like to include them. I don't know whether Karen did. I rather, I'm not sure she did. OK. She was writing. She was your note taker. Like yeah. That. She was my note OK. Um, so, so, OK. 
Do we want it, any other ideas about what we will do with this in addition to a report? Or we can talk about that next time. With the report in front of yeah, I mean, I, 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 but I'd love to have Karen's input on that. Yeah. You know, because she was there and she is the chair. And yeah. I think so. I, my my thought would be to let's put the report together and then discuss it at the next meeting. Okay. Yeah, and possible next steps or add, right. you know, yes. amend or add. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, that's what I'll do. You should put that in the minutes. That okay. I will write a draft of a report, have it ready for the next meeting. We can tinker with it as much as we want to and then hash out what our next steps are. Do we want to um, if our next meeting is the last Wednesday in January. January. In, no, February. No. Well I Oh is this an extra meeting? Yeah. Well this is this our is December, December meeting. December. This is December. It's technically the twenty third of January okay. is our next meeting. Okay. So do we want to Asked to be, do we want to plan to give a report to the city council in February? Yeah, could we do that? We can just um, ask Ryan to put it on the agenda. Okay, so you you meet twice a month, right? First and third Thursday. First and third. Okay. So if we meet on the what? Twenty third. January twenty third. Mm -hmm. So. Um, So like the third Thursday in February, it's the fourth. Oh, well, the third. I'm sorry, the third. Yeah, day I wouldn't try to do it. You wouldn't. You wouldn't do it the first. Too soon. Too soon. The third one would be the third Thursday in February would be um, the 21st. February 21st. And what's the? You said the first and third. What's then the first? The, then it's the seventh. That's a little. That's February's. about two weeks after our January. Well, I don't see why we wouldn't want to do that because we're not going to meet in between. <coughs> Uh, oh, because maybe we won't be ready? Is that what you're thinking? Well, one is we won't be ready, and two, <coughs> I think we'd have to think really hard about how we're going to present. Well, okay. we don't have so, to make that decision now, though. I mean, we can make that decision on the 23rd. Okay. I, I'm that asking because I don't know how hard it is to get onto their agenda, so that if we said now... Could we Piece of cake, it? right? It's not hard at all. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Let's make it. a comment, though, about so, the concept of... Um, submitting a report. Yeah. So you know, the mayor is the executive branch. Yeah. He oversees all the departments and all the department heads and everything that the the departments in the city carries out. Yeah. And the city council is the legislative branch, and really all we have power to do is create legislation. So, for us, we get all kinds of reports all the time, and. All of us are, you know, like working pretty much full time and doing city council on top of that. And so if you really want to be a body that actually gives us kind of um, guidance, a report is great, but what's even better is very concrete and specific recommendations yeah. about what what it could mean, what what kind of policies, what kind of legislation could the city council think about that could actually address some of these issues. For the mayor's office, who actually does oversee, you know, the departments in the city, what what different departments can be identified as having the ability to actually um, address some of these issues? Mm -hmm. Because a report kind of just gives us all the issues mm -hmm. and concerns, and we we actually don't have a lot of space to do brainstorming about yeah. oh, what legislation can we come up with that actually addresses. These Issues. Okay. So if there's any way to actually create concrete recommendations, and I think that would take more time for you guys to yeah. really think about what that could, or look at what other cities have done that's legislative okay. or policies or whatever, and that would go a yeah. long way. And, and you're also saying to give the report to the mayor, which we do plan to do. I think primarily the mayor, actually, because yeah. a lot of this stuff is stuff that, that the different departments can address. The only other thing I want to say, and this is kind of um, a little bit um, building on what Jeremy was talking about, is um, thinking about the school committee, too, and submitting it to the school committee mm. with very specific things about what can be done educationally, what could be carried out by students, what teachers could kind of spearhead with students to actually effectuate change. Okay, that's great. Um, okay, that's good. They just feel really key to the kind of bigger picture. Yes, 
That's good. So that is making me think that all the more reason to, to wait till next month, I mean this month actually, <laughs> the next meeting, to to do that part about recommendations, like we can we can look at the report together and then discuss recommendations. I, I also, I want to second that because I think that we're inclined to do things in a hurry. Yeah. And it does, it isn't as, it would be useful to take a little more time to think it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I get that. Yeah, I agree. That's such good advice, thank you. Yeah, that was really helpful. Um, anything else? Um, so let's see here. So, oh, uh, bystander training. I got nothing to report. I mean, this is something that I think we should do, but we need to find money to do it. And it's not going to be free. So um, I think we need to kind of figure that out. But I, I don't have anything more to say about it. It's, it's not free. Just to remind you that we talked like a year ago about talking to the mayor about creating a revolving fund for the HRC. That's one of the like concrete recommendations that could be made. Oh. To actually get a source of funding and you know to lay out exactly what you might want to do with actual oh that's a great idea yeah and i know we talked about that but a revolving fund is how would the money get into the revolving fund um it comes from different sources and that's something that you'd have to discuss with the mayor okay and then the city council he would submit probably in order to the city council to approve to create it like the um the senior what's it called the dis uh it's the disability commission mm -hmm. having a revolving fund so different commissions do have access to Okay. And like the disability commission gets it from um, parking tickets oh. when people are parking in places. Yeah. So there are different creative ways oh. to think about where okay. to get the funding. Okay, that's very helpful. And new business, any new business? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I have a technical question. Uh, you're allowed to speak. We are asked we ask you to speak, so we ask input from you. Um, usually we have she doesn't count as a member of the public, she's a member of the school committee no, giving us this good advice. City Council, I mean. Yeah. I just wondered if there were technical difficulties about you giving us advice on whether I put it in there or not. Such good advice. You could put it in the minutes. You should put it yeah, in so the minutes. Yeah, so the minutes is a public. public. Yeah. I mean, since I'm no longer officially the liaison to the, the I mean, you guys, if, if, this is, if it's useful for you to have a city council here, you can request from the mayor that he appoint someone. As the liaison to the city council in the next term, I don't know if he would do it midterm because we're here till then. But, but it was kind of a decision of his not to, and I kind of lobbied in, and then the last minute he said yes, but I'd already been appointed to three committees. So. Oh, okay. Well, so you know that's another thing that could that could be one of our recommendations if we think that would help us be more effective. You know, so that can be on the table next week, next month, next meeting. You can always make requests too from um, department heads. You can ask the mayor to, you know, if you have a particular issue you want to deal with that is related to, you know, the what a department handles. You can ask for them to come. So there are all kinds of ways you can interface with the different branches of government. Okay. So can I get a motion to adjourn? Move. Second. Second. Everybody in favor? Okay.